segment is called trader so you can ask me anything and if you're wondering why i have on these shades y'all see that right that light is flashing right in my face right so i need to keep the light off so i can answer your questions all right so any questions that you have regarding the stock market any questions you want me to answer uh go ahead and uh write it in the comment section and i'll try to answer that question to the best of my abilities uh, it's rare that you guys are going to have access to a live trader uh, where, you know, we can answer questions for you. You know, you got a bunch of uh, you got a bunch of traders or investors that hide behind their YouTube or hide behind their Facebook page. But, you know, I like to try to come and, uh, you know, try to inform the public on, you know, what's going on, how to approach the market. Uh, I do have webinar week next week. Webinar week is next week, so if you haven't signed up, sign up for it. If you are a newbie, if you are an advanced trader, it does not matter. I teach advanced traders. I teach people. I teach mutual fund and financial planners. I teach everybody. I teach fifth graders. I teach adults. I teach day traders. I'm an uh, I'm a uh, expert in stocks, options, futures, and cryptocurrency. So I'm here to help you, even if you're an advanced trader. I'm athletic background and I don't try to change your game right but I want to give you a couple of tips that can help you see the market a little bit better using some of the tools that I have going on right now so the first question that came in was uh what the f is going on with crypto all right so cryptocurrency guys cryptocurrency is real anybody that tells you that cryptocurrency is not real they don't understand the game, right? Uh, the stock market, all assets that you're investing in, that you're speculating on, they're all in the same boat. And that's why it's very hard for you to make money, right? If you see investors, if you see billionaires, if you see companies like PayPal and Square and Visa, all investing in cryptocurrency and they're billion dollar companies, then you might have to say to yourself, all right, I'm a thousandaire, those companies are worth billions, almost trillions. Maybe I want to follow their lead. But what's happening right now is uh, China decided that they were going to ban mining. So mining is how we're able to send crypto to and from each other, right? Um, very, you know, if you, if you want to uh, look up what mining is, you can go Google, you know, what's Bitcoin mining, what's crypto mining. But they use their computer to make sure that these transactions go through. We don't need banks anymore. We have our computers that can help. And uh, if you have mining equipment up, you can get paid on facilitating the movement of cryptocurrency to and from uh, you know, um, individuals. So China decided that they were gonna ban crypto mining. So all the crypto miners that are mining, you have to own a certain amount of crypto to even be able to mine. And then once you start mining, you get paid in cryptocurrency. So a lot of the cryptocurrency miners are selling off their crypto. All right. So it caused the crypto market to drop down in value. Now, a great thing is that we, you know, uh, Bitcoin dropped from 60,000 all the way to 30,000. Guys, any asset class that anything that's um, any, this is how I like to kind of compare it to, right? When you start investing in the stock market or crypto or any any asset class, you're going to have your babies, you're going to have your adolescents, and you're going to have your adults. Your babies, your adolescents, and your adults. Babies, very emotional, right? Babies can go from zero to 100 real quick, right? They can go from happy to sad, back to happy, back to sad. 
baby companies are going to be emotional. It's expected. You don't you don't uh, you don't take a baby to um, counseling because they can go from zero to 100. Now, if you see an adult that's going through mood swings, then you might say, hey, you might need some therapy. Something's going on with you psychologically, but it's expected with a baby. Well, crypto is a baby asset class that's trying to grow. So it's going to have fluctuations. So a 50% drop, guys, is expected. The problem that a lot of you traders have is you don't know if your company is a baby, an adolescent, or an adult. Adolescents all also have mood swings, but they're not going to be as they're not going to be as violent as a baby. And then when a company becomes an adult, adults, you know, we're we're a little bit more uh, you know, as far as our emotions, we're able to handle emotions a lot better. So you're not going to see those big old uh, fluctuations in price. When you guys are buying something, you have to ask yourself, if, is this a baby, an adolescent, or an adult? Examples, cryptocurrency, baby, expected to drop 50 to 60% every year. When it drops 50%, you go out and buy it. For you newbies that are just now buying it now, when it drops 50%, you're like, oh my God, it's going to zero. No, it's not. It's a baby. It's expected. Tesla did it. Amazon did it. Apple did it. They all did it. An adolescent company. An adolescent company is something like, well, other baby companies are companies like cannabis stocks. Cannabis stocks, uh, any company that just IPO'd, um, which is an initial public offering, any company that's pretty much under $10 billion in market cap are going to be babies. Adolescent companies are going to be companies like PayPal, Square, um, you know, your wing stops, your Shake Shacks, your, your newer restaurants, your Chipotle's, your, your adult companies are going to be your companies like Walmart, Heinz, Coca-Cola, Nike. They're not going to fluctuate that much, even though I think Nike is up 13 or 14 percent today. So when you're investing in the market, you got to know what am I dealing with, a baby, an adolescent or an adult? Y'all don't do that. So that's why you guys sell at the lows and you buy at the highs because you don't realize that companies are going. Look, look, Bitcoin every single solitary year until it reaches a million dollars a coin is going to drop 50 percent every single solitary year. Expect it. All right. And if you haven't gotten in now. Right. This is probably the time you want to start investing in it. Don't invest in it when it's at its highs. Don't invest in companies that are babies at their highs because they're going to drop 50 percent every single solitary year. And babies actually even drop more than that, 60 to 75 percent. So if you don't know how to look at a chart, that's why you're losing money. You know, when Bitcoin hit 60,000, a lot of people put alerts at 32. Why? Because half of 64 is 32,000. What price you think we sitting at today? Somewhere around 32,000. Why? Because advanced traders, that's how they invest in the market. They want to get things on sale. When I was doing real estate, our number was always 50%. I always had to have, I always looked for houses that were 50 cents on the dollar, as high as 80 cents on the dollar. If I got anything higher than 80 cents on the dollar, I knew that I wasn't making any money because I had to have some type of equity in that particular real estate. Y'all should be doing the same thing when you're buying stock. Quit buying stock at their all-time highs because you have the fear of missing out, which is what we call FOMO. Pull up a chart, say, dang it, I missed it, but it can probably go higher, especially if it's a baby or an adolescent or an adult. Babies are going to grow faster, guys. Babies are nine pounds when they're born. They can grow to be 200 pounds. All right. So I have, uh, there was a question in the uh, inside of trading room today where somebody asked, why would somebody buy a company like Shibu cryptocurrency when you can buy something like Bitcoin? Well, the answer is Shibu coin, or I think that's how you pronounce it, has higher growth potential. Why? Because it's a baby. A baby going from nine pounds to 200 pounds is going to grow 20 times its weight. An adult or an adolescent that's already 100 pounds is only going to grow double its weight. An adult that's already an adult 
they've already maxed out how big they can grow so they can only grow sideways right you can get fat as you get as you become an adult and you can grow 10 20 30 percent your size but you've already maxed out how much you can grow right so bitcoin still has 14 i think 20 times its value that it can grow why because everybody's looking at that magical number which you probably didn't know about which is 14 trillion dollars why 14 trillion dollars got uh joel because 14 trillion dollars represents the value of gold and if bitcoin's gonna be the digital store of value of gold it's got to equal to what gold is now well bitcoin right now it, it at one point it was one trillion i think right right now it's like it uh 500 or 600 billion in market cap when it hits 14 trillion all you got to do is divide 14 trillion by its market cap right now you already know what price bitcoin is going to it's going to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a coin a lot of you guys don't know how to do that because y'all don't know how to invest y'all don't even look at market cap you look at the stock price nobody cares about the stock price because the stock price doesn't tell you how big the company is and if it's a baby an adolescent or an adult so you guys just look at the you, you you guys use the law of big numbers and say if the number is too big i'm gonna stay away from it and that's why you guys struggle as traders because you don't know what to look for or investors and it's the easiest thing only that's why one or ten percent of the world owns 90 percent of it because you guys won't get educated on what to look for when you're buying stock yeah you're buying apple right but apple is the largest company on the planet it's two trillion dollars in market cap if you're buying apple you should be buying apple for stability not to get wealthy because apple is already two trillion right what you expect it to go to 200 trillion right in order for it to grow a hundred times its value guys it's got to be small enough as a baby to grow right you guys are buying full-grown adults that's 200 pounds and expecting it to go to grow 10 times its size no it can still grow i'm not telling you to not buy apple you're buying apple for the wrong reasons apple makes the most money in the world right so i should be making money too you don't make money off the operations of a company you make money on the growth of a company and a lot of you guys don't know that and you're learning it today all right so uh somebody said that nike could run another 50 percent now when somebody says that nike could run another 50 percent the first thing you guys should have done was said well what is the market cap of nike right somebody pull that up and put it in the uh in the comment section i don't even know what the market cap is if the market cap of nike is 500 billion dollars and someone says that nike can run up another 50 percent stop looking at the share price and start looking at the market cap and says all right if it's 500 billion dollars in market cap and we believe that it can grow 50 percent that means half of 500 billion is 250 billion that means it can run to 750 billion is that possible is that realistic yes yeah, realistic why because microsoft is a two trillion dollar company apple is a two trillion dollar company google is a 1.7 trillion dollar company facebook is a 800 billion dollar company that means nike can get to the size of facebook that's realistic you guys don't have realistic expectations when you guys are buying stuff you buy something and say all right stock make me a millionaire <laughs> and i talk this way because y'all are gambling y'all are gambling y'all are buying stock and you're gambling and you don't even realize you're gambling right you don't even realize you're gambling you guys are are investing in 401ks and you're supposed to do that you're supposed to invest in a 401k or an ira you don't even know what you invested in all right you don't even know that your account is probably only going to grow double its size it's probably only going to double its size seven to ten years and a lot of you guys are expecting to retire off of it you're gambling because you don't know what you're invested in you don't know how fast your accounts are growing you don't know about inflation are you keeping up with inflation these are things these are topics that we need to talk about as adults 
as new investors in this market to kind of understand how do wealthy people become wealthy and why do we keep going in circles? It's because you're not educated on what to look for. If you're still buying stock based on its share price, you are a rookie. Pretty, I mean, You're a rookie because you don't know what to look for. You're looking at a share price and and uh, and these big old head, these are uh, big corporations. They use that to their advantage. They say, man, look at these suckers. This stock price is $1,000. Nobody's buying it. So let's do a reverse stock split, make the stock $100 so that people feel like they can invest in the company now. And they don't even realize that they can just go on uh, their cash app or they can go on Fidelity or they can go on Robinhood and they can buy as much as this company with whatever amount of money they have. They don't know about that. So let's just let's just let's just capitalize on these suckers bring the stock price down and make them think that it's about to go back to the price that it came from. Y'all ran out and did that with Apple. You ran out there and you did it with Tesla because you're not educated. You hear reverse stock split and you think I'm about to become a millionaire because you're a rookie. And you got to look in the mirror and accept it and say, dang it, I am a rookie. Only one trader on the planet is coming out and telling you guys when you guys are fools and when you're not fools. Right. You're a rookie. You're gambling. You're not doing it the correct way. Right. And I get a lot of flat for it, for being real because I'm tired of seeing y'all lose money. I really am. I'm tired of y'all running and buying stuff because of FOMO and not knowing what to look for. And there's nothing wrong with, with running after something that you think can grow. But you got to understand why you're buying it. Everybody was running and buying Bitcoin because Bitcoin ain't hit a trillion dollars yet when bitcoin was a hundred billion dollars and you started seeing money pour into it all the one percenters said man this thing can go to a trillion that means i can make 10 times my money that means a ten thousand dollar investment is going to be worth a hundred that means a five thousand dollar investment is going to be worth 50. y'all see how i broke that down just that simple y'all don't do that you don't buy a stock and then say, how much can this thing grow? And is it realistic? And what number is it trying to go to? You don't do that. You buy a stock and you look at the share price and say, it's $50. I've seen a stock before that was $2,000. So it can go to that price. The most rookie way of looking at the market you can ever be. And you guys do that. All right, let's see some other questions that are coming. All right, so Nike is a $240 billion company. Guys, that's, that's big. But that's still small. So if Apple grew half, let's say Apple doubled in value. I don't care. Y'all see, I, don't, I never talk about share price. Because that's what rookies talk about. Rookies discuss share price. I don't know. Billionaires don't care about a share price because they can afford any and every stock that's out there. Only thousandaires talk in share price. Advanced traders talk in market cap. Rookies talk in share price. Advanced traders talking market cap. Oh, Nike's 240 billion. Maybe it can reach 750 billion. Maybe I can make three times my money. How long is it going to take me to do that? Maybe I don't know. How long did it? How long did it take for Apple to double? And the last time, you know, when it was 120 billion dollars in market cap. How long did it take to double? If I can figure out that number, I'm going to know how long it's going to take for it to double again. Y'all don't do that. This is how one percenters think. Y'all look at the stock price and say, ooh, it's $17. I think somebody's going to be willing to pay $50 for it because $50 is still reasonable. So I'm going go, to go and put $100,000 in Nike. And you got a doctorate or a PhD. And you doing this crap. <laughs> and then laugh and say, you need to buy stable companies. And you still a rookie and don't even realize it. Yeah, you lucked up and bought a Nike or a Facebook or a Microsoft or a Google or a Apple and you made money, but you had no idea why you were buying it. Because if you knew where it was going to, you probably would have put more money into it. If you knew that Bitcoin was going to a trillion dollars like everybody else did, you probably would have believed in it. You would have said, you know what? $5,000 ain't bad if I know it's going to be $50,000. And that's why y'all missed out on it, because you're listening to thousandaires talk about what if something's real or not. Anything like like what are you talking about? 
Like, like we, we buy paintings, we buy cars, everything in life we buy, humans attach a price to it or a value to it. So if a human is going to say Bitcoin is worth 30 and somebody's willing to pay 30,000 for it, a rookie is somebody that says it's not worth anything. It's going to zero because you're just mad because you didn't make money on it pretty much. So if you're going to speculate, then you're going to be in the stock market. If you don't want to speculate, then go buy real estate or go. And, and even buying real estate is speculation. And y'all don't even realize that. Y'all, you, you don't even realize why the price of real estate goes up in value. Y'all still don't understand why it goes up in value. A lot of y'all feel, well, most of the time, if you're in an area where it's very hot and, uh, you know, and, and you're using supply and demand, yeah, supply and demand is going to take real estate up. But for the most part, real estate is going to go up in value because of inflationary uh, issues that's going on. Governments are printing money. The value of everything around you is going up in value. People still got to live in homes. So even though the real estate is going up in price and you think that you're getting richer, you're not. You're just staying. You're just keeping up with the Joneses. That's all you're doing. You're keeping up with the Harrisons. You feel like, hey, I just, I'm, I'm $100,000 richer. Well, you're $100,000 richer because now the cost of everything around you is going up in price, especially the cost that it, the, the, the cost that it takes to even build that house. Because if you've been looking at lumber prices, lumber prices have been going up in value. All right. So you guys got to get educated, man. And then y'all going to, y'all going to hear me stop ranting like this because I do not like seeing grown ass people approach the market like rookies. I got fifth graders that know how to invest better than y'all do. Fifth, sixth, seventh graders. And I say it all the time to make you mad. Your kids are probably better investors than you are, especially if they come under my tutelage because they know what to look for. They're like, oh, this company is a billion dollars. If it grows to 10 billion, I can make 10 times my money. That's a better investment than buying something that's already 1.5 trillion. Why? Because it's easier for something to go from 1 billion to 10 billion than 1 trillion to 10 trillion. And some of you grown as adults don't know that. Get educated. Educate your friends. Educate your family. That's why I'm here. I'm finally somebody's going to come out and say, what are y'all doing? This ain't how you do it. This is how you do it. All right. So 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 don't get caught up in my delivery. Get caught up in the information that I'm giving to you. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to keep ranting until I get some questions. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What specifically do you look for when deciding that a company in its infancy could be a great investment? For example, you talk about U1 and U1K. What about this company? What about this company prompted you to invest? Very good question. Very good question. So what I really love about what a lot of you guys are doing is that we're very good at finding information, but we're not attaching that information to real life situations. So, for example, U1K and U1 and U1K are black owned companies, black owned stocks. Now, I just learned recently that there's like 20 other black owned stocks and I'm in the stock game and didn't know about it. So I'm going to start educating myself on other black owned companies, because if you didn't know this, I'm black. <laughs> All right. Surprise. Joel Harrison's a black guy. All right. So I want to invest in black companies. I want black owned companies. I want to invest in everything. I love to give back to where I, you know, I know where I came from. Right. So when you look at those particular companies, the first thing I looked at was its market cap. I saw that its market cap was under a billion dollars. Now, the, those types of companies, if you, if, you, uh, if you take those types of companies, just like you would do in real estate, and you take other companies that are similar to it, you want to compare them. And you want to say, all right, what company, what radio station or what investment firm is similar to these particular companies. And you look up what their market capitalization is. Now, I didn't even have to look it up because most companies, once they start getting funding from mutual funds and pension funds and they become part of the S&P 500 or the Dow or the NASDAQ, they're going to get to about a $25 billion market cap. 
So the goal is to try to get a company that's a billion dollars to 25 billion. That means you make 25 times your money. How did I know that Square was going to be a better investment than PayPal and Visa? Well, you got to take those three, right? And I do this in all of my webinars. Visa was a very well-established company. Square and PayPal were similar to Visa, but they were newer. Visa was about a $300 billion or $400 billion company. Square and PayPal were companies that were a lot smaller, but they were growing in value. How did we know where these companies, how, you know, how, you know, if these companies could grow in value? Easy, because Visa was already $300 billion. That means if I look up and I see Square and it's $25 billion, and I see Visa and it's $300 billion, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of growth potential for Square because if Square ever got to the size of Visa, I'm going to make 10 times my money. Right. If it's 25 billion and it gets to even 250 billion, I'm going to make 10 times my money. Well, what about Visa? Should I still invest in Visa? Well, Visa, if it grew 10 times its value, guys, it's going to go from 300 billion to 3 trillion. There ain't no 3 trillion dollar companies out there. So what's more realistic? A company that's small that can grow to the size of an established company or a company that's already established that can go to levels that nobody has ever seen before. Can it happen? Yeah, with the government printing money. But even if Visa decided to go to $6 trillion, because Square and PayPal are similar to them, they're going to grow even faster because Visa is the comp. If you're in real estate, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. We always establish a price for something by comparing it to something else. We got to have a comp to know where it can go to. Gold was the comp for Bitcoin, all right? Uh, Visa was the comp for PayPal and Square, all right? If you're looking up U1K or U1 or looking for companies that are similar to it, you gotta look at what the comp is to figure out what it can go to. If you're into e-commerce companies and you know that Amazon is the largest e-commerce company on the planet, and then all of a sudden you hear uh, Alibaba is the Amazon of China, or Mercado Libre is the Amazon of Latin America, or Shopify is the Amazon of Canada. Well, Amazon was the comp, two trillion. So if you go and you look up Shopify, and you know that it's the Amazon of Canada, and you see that it's 50 billion, there's a discrepancy. You're like, hold up, it's 50 billion, and Amazon is two trillion? Who has the highest growth potential? Shopify. You know why you guys didn't buy Shopify? Because Shopify was $1,000 or $500 a share. And you were like, I'm not going to buy this company for $500 a share when I can go buy Ford and get 100 shares? Because that's how rookies think. I can buy more shares, so I'm going to make more money. Nah, you make your money from market cap. Why am I so into Ford and General Motors right now? Y'all have no idea why I love Ford and General Motors. Y'all be arguing about how stuff look, and, 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 and I'm like, guys, Tesla went from $25 billion to $600 billion in two years. $25 to $600. It went from being the 15th or the 20th largest car company on the planet to number one, and not only did it become number one, it's three times bigger than second place. Second place is $200 billion. Tesla is $600 billion. That makes no sense. Now, I love Tesla. I love it. I own one, right? I rolled Tesla stock up until it hit numbers I didn't even think it can go to. But when you see a company that's $600 billion, you see Toyota sitting at $200 billion. You look and you see Ford and General Motors are 50, 50 and 60, and Tesla 600. Does that even make sense? Ford and General Motors are, I'm sorry, Tesla is 10 times, you hear what I said? 10 times bigger than Ford and General Motors? There's a discrepancy. Either Ford and General Motors are about to explode in price or Tesla's about to come down in price. But here's the win-win for Ford and General Motors and this is how one percenters think. If Tesla decides to keep running, Tesla's the comp. When comps run, it pulls everything up. 
Y'all don't get this yet because you don't understand what to look for when you're buying stock. So if Tesla decides to go to three trillion, then they're gonna look back and say, well, what's the next best thing? Ford and General Motors. Tesla is pulling up Ford and General Motors. That's why Ford and General Motors was forced to make electric cars. Because they were like, all right, if investors are willing to put all their money into an electric car company and make it the largest car company on the planet, then we got to do what they're doing. And that's exactly what Ford and General Motors are doing. They're everything they're like Ford came, General Motors came out and said, look, guys, we want to be Tesla, too. We're putting 50 billion dollars into electric cars because we want that 600 billion dollar market cap or even 150. And that's what's funny. Ford and General Motors don't even have to go to 600 billion. They can go to 200 billion. You still gonna make four times your money. Y'all don't see that because rookies and people that haven't been investing for 10 years don't know what to look for. I do. All right. Investors look at stocks just like real estate, right? They want to get fundamentally good companies. Don't get me wrong. I want you guys to learn the PE ratios and all that other stuff. I don't do that anymore. Right. I used to read white papers and all that. Great. Come and tell me if the company's good. If the company is good, I put a check by it. If I see money flowing into it, I know where it can go to. All right. And that's how you guys should be approaching the market as well. All right. Let me get to some of these questions. Hopefully I was able to break that down for you. All right. Uh, OK. Michael, Michael said it took about two years for Nike to double. So if it took two years for Nike to double and you throw $100 into Nike, then Nike, it, then that $100 is going to be worth $200. When, guys? In the next 24 months. All right. If you're buying Nike right now, because you're like, even if they said we just signed Kanye, y'all running out there and buying Nike, Kanye, 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 I'm going to be rich. All right. You got to look at the market cap and see, because that's where you make money. You don't make money because a person's willing to pay a higher price, which I guess you, you are. But the market cap, guys, the market cap is a real value. It's a real size of that company that's expanding. You make your money from the expansion of a company, not by how much money that company makes. All right. Quit thinking and investing like rookies. All right. Uh, CARV is also black owned. All right. I'm going to have to check that one out. SEGI is black owned Sycamore Entertainment Group. Man, I'm glad y'all schooling me on this because I didn't know this. We need to come out with a watch list of black owned companies. All right. <laughs> My brother said he never knew I was black. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? If, if I don't have any other questions, I'm going to do the uh, charts with Joel segment. But guys, get get educated. Know what to look for. Buy companies because they have growth potential, not because you like them or you or you or you work for them. Even if you work for them, you should know how much they could grow in value. All right. Quit buying stocks the way rookies buy it. Rookies buy based on stock price because you can't tell how much it can grow. I can't look at Etsy and know if it's an adolescent, a baby or an adult by looking at its share price. I can't buy cryptocurrency. Like like if I was to go buy car, like a lot of you guys don't even know Cardano is the fifth largest cryptocurrency on the planet. And you're like Cardano. I bought Cardano because, you know, I looked and saw that it was point zero or oh, I'm sorry. I, I went and bought it because it was a dollar a share and I wanted to buy it for a dollar a share instead of Bitcoin, which was 30,000. And that was you lucked up and you bought it for the right reasons in that particular case. But a lot of you guys aren't even buying stuff like, and, and please don't go out and buy it just because I said this, but like Yearn Finance, right, is, is a decentralized uh, crypto that I've been investing in. It's 30, I think it's 40 or $50,000 a coin. Now, I didn't put 50,000 in it, but what was I looking for? I didn't care that it was $50,000 a coin because that's how rookies look at the market. The only reason why I bought it was because it was a one billion dollar coin. And I said to myself, this one billion can go to 10 billion. And if it goes from a one billion dollar market cap to a 10 billion dollar market cap, it can go from a fifty thousand dollar coin to a five hundred thousand dollar coin. Will I own a full coin? Nah. But if I put a thousand dollars into it, it that thousand dollars can be worth 10. It's going to take a long time for you guys to 
untrain the terrible ways you guys have been approaching the market. And it starts today. Today, we don't care about stock price. Today, we care about market cap. This is market cap day. We are going to start trading like the one in 10 percenters. You got to first educate yourself. Go on Yahoo Finance. When you pull up a company, don't tell me the stock price no more. All right. Tell me the market cap. The market cap is what gets me interested. Don't tell me what the what the stock price is because I don't care what it is because you can create your own stock price. If I want the stock price to be $100, it's $100. If I want it to be 1,000, it's 1,000, and I own one share. If I want it to be 10,000, it's gonna be 10,000, because you make your money on the growth of a company. Yeah, the share price going up in value does make you money, but if you don't know how much or how big that company is, and, and none of you guys ever do it. When you guys post stuff, you're always posting the stock, how much it can grow, but you never talk about the market cap, and that's why people are uneducated on what to look for, on why they're buying, you know, this stock or that stock, or or why they rather put all their money in a square instead of putting all their money in a visa, or what account to put that into. All right, I always teach people to, that you should be looking at the market in three ways. If you're approaching the market one way, then you're. I wouldn't say that you're gambling, but you, most people either come to the market and they're too conservative or they're too aggressive. They're too conservative or too aggressive. They're either long-term. This is all I hear. The long-term is where you make all the money. You're right. But that doesn't mean you can't make money short-term because you could have made you could have made $50,000 investing in crypto and then took that $50,000 and then invested it long-term. So there could be quick money being made. Like their space, I think, today is up 20%. If you're trading the options market, you can make a thousand percent return. You know how long it takes to make a thousand percent return in a stock? It might take three, four, five, ten years to do that. So you guys need to learn how to be aggressive and conservative at the same damn time. Y'all ain't doing that, right? You either too conservative or too aggressive. And I'm like, you should be both. 90% of your assets need to be conservative. 10% of your assets should be aggressive. Anybody, everybody in the inside of trading room, if you're a one percenter, should have owned some crypto. Should you have put 90% of your income in it or assets? Nah. But if I got a 10, if I got a if I had ten thousand dollars, why not put a thousand dollars in it? Because if you had done it and stopped listening to the thousandaires, your thousand dollars would have been worth ten thousand dollars and you would have doubled your account. Let's say you lost it all. Who cares? Because if you're investing the correct way, your $9,000 should have made you 10 or 20%. So if you had made, you know, $1,800, right? And you lost $1,000, you're still going to be up 800 bucks. You guys need to learn how to be aggressive and conservative at the same damn time. Y'all ain't doing that, which is why you... Which is why you got a lot of hate that comes in the room when people see all of these receipts that people are making short term. And then when the long term people are showing receipts, the short term people are getting mad and frustrated because they want to get to that that level. The problem is you need to be doing both. I'm one of the few people that tell you that if you see something running, you can trade it. The people that come in the room and say you don't buy that because it's this right they're not a asking the right questions. You can trade anything, right? If you're an investor and you're flipping houses, a home flipper can go in any hot area, pick up a piece of real estate, renovate it and flip it and go on to the next one. Everybody can't do that, right? If you see a stock that's running, just because it's running or just because it's at its highs doesn't mean that you can't buy it, right? It might be hot for about three, four, five, six months. It might be life-changing for you. All right. The people that tell you don't do it are the people that just don't know how to trade. All right. You got to understand how to trade, how to invest and how to keep those accounts separate. I teach those in all of my webinars. I teach it in the webinar that's coming next week called Webinar Week. Every webinar week, first day I teach stocks. How do you buy stocks? Second day, I always teach how to buy options. The third day is always up in the air. Last of uh, the last of. Uh, Webinar, I think I did strategy party. So we approached the market strategy-wise, short-term, medium-term, long-term. All right, so a lot of you guys have been struggling day trading, right? The only reason why I'm going to talk about day trading in this next webinar week is because volatility decreased. 
So everybody, so y'all been wondering why I've been out there golfing and, and having a good time and not really day trading because volatility decreased. Anybody, any and everybody should have known that. A lot of you guys don't. Y'all are like, oh, volatility decreased? Yeah, I taught you volatility. You know, when volatility decreases, it means that the amount of money that you usually were making during the day is going to decrease. So in order for you to make that same amount of money, you got to increase your leverage or increase your risk to reward. But when volatility decreases, I start getting a little bit more aggressive in the options market. You got to learn how to change with whatever is dealt to you. A lot of traders, even advanced traders, they don't know how to do that, right? Let's say you're Tom Brady and, you know, your game plan has always been to throw a 70 or 80 yard bomb. You've been winning games by throwing, you know, 400 yards, 500 yards a game. And then the next game that you play is in Pittsburgh and it's windy outside, it's snowing and you're in an outdoor stadium. Well, most of y'all are going to come into the game and say, bump that. We've been winning for the last nine games. We're just going to keep throwing bombs. We're just going to keep throwing bombs. And the people in Pittsburgh are laughing. They're like, yo, the conditions are going to make it where you can't throw nothing. So all the DBs are coming up because they're like, it's not, there's no way he's going to be able to throw a 50 or 60 yard bomb. It's probably only going to go about 30 or 40 yards. So the DBs are going to play up. They don't care. They're like, all right, I don't have to play off the defender anymore. I'm going to play the conditions that are out. And we're going to go grab our cleats because it's raining outside. So we're going to add a one and a half inch cleat because these fools going to come in with no cleats thinking that they're going to run all over the place. But we know what the conditions are going to be. So we're going to have traction. Y'all don't do that. Y'all come into the market and say, I'm going to trade the same way every single day for 365 days. Because you're not a one percenter. You don't understand how to change with the market because of volatility. All right. You got to learn how to do that. And all of you educators teaching one way and one way only and not changing with the volatility. You guys are losing your clients money. That's why I tell people to look at the ATR every single day. If you're trading, that ATR might change. The average true range when you're day trading, guys, is going to change depending on the volatility of the market. Only one percenters understand this. I understand that the conditions change. Dang, Apple normally moves $2. Now it's only moving a dollar. Or Apple was moving $6 a day, and now it's only moving two. Why did that happen? Because volatility decreased. Volatility decreases when people get comfortable with the market. That's why the market is sitting at all-time highs right now. It's sitting at all-time highs because nobody is scared. The best time to trade is when there's fear in the market, when there's a lot of volatility in the market. There ain't no volatility. So when there's no volatility, I'm not going to sit out there and spin my wheels trying to day trade something that doesn't move like it does. And if I'm going to do it, I got to make sure I find specifically what the billionaires are buying. Because when there's a lot of volatility, it's easy to make money in the market. When the volatility decreases, you got to be really good at stock picking. And stock picking isn't uh, you studying something all night long. Stock picking is when the market opens, I got to see what the billionaires are buying. The educators that says that that doesn't matter, they don't know how to trade the market. All right. And there's a lot of educators that are doing that. All right. And I'm trying to show you guys what to look for and what the one percenters are looking for. So I got to get out of here. Let me see if there's any other questions. Oh, how do you know when the volatility is going down? Well, you got to look at the volatility index. All right. So I teach the volatility index. Also, the volatility index is what you're going to hear. If you're watching Bloomberg or if you're watching CNBC, you're going to always hear them talk about three things. They're either going to talk about the uh, the indexes, the S&P, the Dow, the, the NASDAQ. They're going to talk about the futures market, too. And they're going to talk about the volatility index. They're going to talk about stocks. I'm sorry, they're going to talk about the indexes, they're going to talk about the futures market, and they're going to talk about uh, the volatility index. Why? Because those three things move the market, okay? So you got to learn all three if you're trying to swing trade and day trade. The volatility index, every, every true one percenter knows that there's three numbers you look for, 16, 32, 48, 16, 32, 48. 32 is the best, 32 is when everybody's making money. 48 
you can make a whole bunch of money, but you can lose a whole bunch of money too. 48 means you should really not be day trading and just start investing in any and everything that's around you because catastrophic events are happening. When the pandemic happened, the volatility index was above 50. That means you could have made life-changing moves. 32 is there's fear out there, but the market is still going to fluctuate in value. Think of it like an ocean. 16 is going to be no waves. So if I was a surfer and I went out and I wanted to, uh, if, I, if I was looking at the volatility index and I was comparing it to the ocean and I see 16, 16 represents no waves. So even as a surfer, I can be a professional surfer. I can't surf the market. That's what we're experiencing right now. If the volatility is right around 16, there ain't no waves. When there's when the volatility index is at 32, that's what surfers like to, to surf. When the volatility index is at 48, even surfers can't surf those waves. The waves are too big. So you should you should be trying to find as much money as you can to invest in the market because you're about to make day trading type gains in everything that you invest in. Only one percenters know this. Right. But we've been teaching this for the last decade to look at the volatility index. All right. The volatility index is the most important index that you're ever going to see or come in contact with that none of y'all talk about. I talk about it all the time and I try to encourage you guys to look at it. But, you know, y'all just want to look at stocks and go read Reddit and look at CNBC or get these stock alerts instead of looking for it on your own. OK, but I teach all of this stuff in my uh, particular uh, webinars. Uh, a question came in. Should I buy crypto now? Well, crypto drops 50 percent every year. Every single so you can't go back and look at a year where Bitcoin didn't hit a high and drop 50 percent. Now, what are other asset classes that in their infancy was dropping 50 percent every year? Amazon, Apple, Google, Tesla. All companies in their infancy, guys, are going to drop 50 to 75 percent before ratcheting higher 400 to 500 to 600 percent. It's just numbers. You guys are afraid because you've never seen anything do that in your life. So when you see it for the first time, you think something's wrong with it. Why would Apple drop 20 percent? Is something wrong with Apple? Nah, Apple drops 20 percent every single solitary year. You should have known that just by looking at the beta. The beta is going to tell you how much that company fluctuates. It, should you buy crypto? Crypto drops 50%, 50 to 75% every single solitary year. Now it's down 50%. If you're trying to buy it, this is the time to buy it. Can it drop lower? Yeah, it can drop 65 to 75% from the highs. So what's 75% off? of something that's $60,000. That's what price Bitcoin is probably trying to go to before it goes to $100,000 or $200,000 a coin. All right? You, gotta, you guys got to know levels. You guys got to know when to invest in things. When do you buy things on sale? In real estate, 20% is the number. In the stock world, all everybody knows that you buy Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, any company that's in the top 20 in market cap, when they drop 20 percent, it's a no brainer to just go and buy it. I don't have to know anything going on with the company. All I need to know is, is it 20 percent off? All right, I'm going to go buy it. Why? Because it's a fundamentally good company. It's probably going to be around in the next 10 years. If the if the beta is higher than 1.5 or 2.0, I know it's going to overshoot that 50 percent. If it's got a beta of 2.5 or 3, I know it's going to drop 75%. Even if it's a good company. Square? Square drops 60% every year. So when it happens, how do you guys not know that it's happening? It's not because I'm not, it's not because I'm not teaching it to you, because I teach it to y'all in every single solitary video. I try to talk about Square and PayPal every other video. Because Square and PayPal and NVIDIA have been the companies and Facebook have been the companies that pretty much created the wealth for my family. All right. They just uh, uh, I think uh, Tanika put out a uh, um, Tanika put out a post where Peter Thiel invested in PayPal in the beginning. I think he invested like seventeen hundred or two thousand dollars in an IRA and it ended up being worth, I think, a billion dollars or something ridiculous. Why? Because it was a baby company that could grow in market cap and value, all right? How do you find companies like that? Well, A, you gotta know what the market cap is, right? Anything around a billion to two billion, 
I'm trying to invest in because it's easy for something to go from 2 billion to 10. So if you're going to buy crypto, why are you buying it? What are you buying it? How big is it? Right? Can it grow? Bitcoin can grow if it's being valued to gold. If it's being valued to stock, then you can say, well, if Apple is 2 trillion and Bitcoin's 500 billion, it can still grow four times its value and still be the largest, you know, still be on in line with the largest asset that, that investors have invested in, right? But if they're trying to value it to gold, then Bitcoin's gonna go to 14 trillion. And that's a $750,000 coin. So when it happens, don't look back and say somebody didn't tell you it was going to happen. That's the comp. Gold is the comp. That's what Bitcoin can go to if we treat it as a store of value. If we don't, then yeah, it can go, it can do whatever it wants to do. But it's been proving people wrong for 10 years. Like how much further, how much more does it have to grow before you decide, all right, it's here to stay. It's already, it already got to a trillion dollars. That's crazy, guys. A trillion. It took Apple 20 years to do that. Bitcoin grew to a trillion dollars in 10 years. It's the fastest growing asset ever. But yet y'all want to say it's not real. Okay, keep listening to thousandaires. All right. Uh, I guess you guys will keep coming with the uh, questions. I have a day trading question if we talk about that today. It's cool if you have a day trading question. How do you know when volatility is going down? Oh, I guess I already answered that question. You got to watch the volatility index. All right. Somebody tell me. Somebody look up the VIX. It's the VIX. If it's 16, that means nobody, there's no fear in the market. That means there's no waves. That means you got to stop pick. That that means you got to pull up that, uh, you guys got to pull up the um, think or swim um, what is it called? The percent gainers list. And you can see what the billionaires are actually buying today. Like they were buying, like, I think I looked up, looked it up today. They were buying space. They were buying Nike. Now, does that mean you got to go out there and buy space and Nike? Nah, you're going to pull up space and Nike and you're going to ask yourself, what am I about to do? Am I about to day trade? Am I about, am I about to swing trade this? Or is this going into a long-term account? Y'all don't do that. You buy it and then you pray. And then if it's down tomorrow, you're wondering why it's down. Well, it's down tomorrow because it was up 15% today. What was your strategy? My strategy was not to lose money. Well, this ain't the game for you, right? You got you to gotta be able to answer the question before you even buy it. Is this short term, medium term, long term? How much money are you investing in it? How much money do you expect to make from it? If you can't answer those questions, you shouldn't be buying it. Joel, I got $1,000. What should I invest in? I don't know. What are you looking to make from that thousand? I get that question every day. Joel, I got $1,500. What should I invest in? $1,500? I don't know. Are you expecting $100 from it? Are you expecting the $1,500 to grow to a million? Are you expecting the $1,500 to make a 20% return, 100% return? Like, what is your goal? So if I get A plus B, it's easy for me to figure out what C is. Y'all come to me with A. That's it. Joel, I want to be a millionaire. What you going to start out with? Joel, I got $1,000. What do you want it to grow to? <laughs> right? <laughs> like everybody has a different situation. All right. So if I get Joel, I got $1,000. I need it to grow to $10,000 by December. Oh, I got A plus B equals C now. You need to make a thousand percent return in six months. So then my brain says, what can give me a thousand percent return in six months? Y'all got people in the room right now that's like, it's okay. Just go put your money in an index. Well, if an index only averages 10% a year, then you just steer this individual wrong. Educators that are out there, you got to be weary and where you got to be aware of who you're talking to they're giving you one part and not giving you a plus b equals c and then when i come at people like that they get offended because i'm all about numbers they get offended because i called them out well i'm sorry 
All right. That's just what I do. I hate to see lax, lazy ways of investing and educating. I just hate it. So what asset classes out there can get you a thousand percent return in six months? Crypto can do it. If you luck up and get down, if you can buy at the lows, that's not buying it right here. Well, I guess it would be buying it right here. And if it's buying it right here, you got to expect crypto to really, really run. Have we seen crypto drop like this and then immediately bounce back in six months? We haven't seen that happen yet. It usually takes a little bit when a when a crypt, when cryptocurrency drops about 50 to 60 percent, it takes about 24 months before it to start running again. So anybody expecting it to be, they keep saying it might be a hundred thousand by the end of the year. I don't see it because I haven't seen it be done yet. Can it get back to 100000 and then hit $300,000 in 24 months? Yeah. But when you get shot, think of it like, like Bitcoin got shot. Bitcoin was out of the club and got shot. And now it's trying to heal, <laughs> right? After getting shot, it takes time to heal. Once Bitcoin heals and it's back to 100%, then it can get out there and start doing those numbers y'all been seeing it do. But do I think it's going to get shot and then all of a sudden come back strong? Nah, it's got to heal. That's just my opinion. All right. So, yeah, should you invest in it now? Yeah. But realistically, do I see it being at 60 or 70 by the end of the year? If it happens, great. I own a full Bitcoin. If it doesn't, realistically, when am I expecting it to run again? In about another 18 months. Takes time to heal. Okay. What's another market that's going to give you a thousand percent return? The options market. All right. But you got to make sure that you're buying it at the right areas, right? So if you want a certain amount of money to reach a certain amount of money, you guys need to be invested in, in the types of companies that can allow you to get those types of gains. Y'all ain't doing that. You're listening to people and then you're like, I need, I need, uh, I need. A thousand to be ten thousand dollars by December, Joel, and then they'll say, "Well, just go buy reputable companies." And then you're like, "All right, I'm just gonna go buy Nike." And I can have a gun to my head, and if somebody said, "Yo, you have a chance to put your money in Nike," do you expect it to go to ten times its value by December? I'm gonna be like, "Hell no! There's no chance in hell that that Nike is about to grow ten times its value by December." It's just not going to, but Joel, the market's going to open back up and they're going to make more money. That's not how the investment side work. Who you listen, who are you talking to? You obviously are not looking at the market cap because it's not about, Nike is not about to overtake Apple and Amazon and Google by December. But a lot of y'all think that it will. And I'm like, who are y'all listening to? Market cap wise, realistic, you know how much it has to grow to get to that value? And then y'all are like, oh man, that makes a lot of sense. Or if if you just now learning it, you're like, oh, I don't like Joel. He made me feel bad about myself because now I feel stupid because I never knew to look at the market this way. So I hate him. <laughs> I get that a lot. Sorry. I'm tired of seeing y'all approach the market like fourth graders. Third graders, y'all sitting on millions of dollars and you putting it into ridiculous stuff, having real dumb, realistic expectations. I hate saying it. I, me and Noble hate hearing the sob stories about how much money y'all lost or why you weren't allocated the correct way or because you're either too conservative or you're too aggressive and you don't know how to approach the market and do it all. I'm conservative and aggressive at the same time. I'm not just conservative. I'm not fully aggressive, but I'm invested in every single thing that y'all see. Anything that we talk about. Why does Joel invest and make money on everything? Because Joel knows how to trade and invest. And I'm trying to show you guys how you can do it all and quit listening to people tell you you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. They should. They just scared. They don't know how to do it. All right. Anyway. I think I, I think that was the last question. <laughs> I think that was the last question. All right, guys, share the video. That was an hour exactly. I was only going to come on for 30 minutes. Share this video. Y'all know I do this just for fun, just for uh, laughs, but it usually tires me out. <laughs> All right. So I need to do uh, charts with Joel. So charts with Joel is going to be a little different. Charts with Joel is different from Ask the Trader. Charts with Joel, you give me a stock pick. 
All right, I'm going to analyze that stock. Normally, when I'm doing charts with Joel, it's for long-term investing. I'll, I'll do some day trades. If you want to look at day trading type um, you know, analysis, then you need to probably check in on my midday monies that I do Monday through Thursdays. But Fridays are for my um, long-term investors. People worked all week long. Uh, they got a little bit of money to coming in. They want to. They decide they want to invest in the market. They're investing monthly into certain stocks, and they kind of want to get an idea of what happened during the week. So that's what I usually do during charts with Joel. Uh, make sure that whatever stock that you guys give me, it has at least a one billion dollar market cap or higher. Anything less than a billion dollars, I can get in trouble by pumping and dumping schemes. So uh, just make sure that you guys give me a company that's one billion plus. That's gonna teach you guys how to go out and look at the market cap, because y'all ain't doing it, because y'all rookies. And I said it. That's right. I told you you're a rookie. So go get educated so that you can stop trading like a rookie. All right, I'm out of here. Coming to you guys from Decatur, where it's greater, and I'm out. Peace.